a bit of a late addition, and I'm so happy that we were able to get this done because uh, if you joined us at the top of the show, I was talking about the Chael Sonnen and Tito Ortiz fight, and I was talking about the uh, the theories as to whether or not it was fixed, it was fake, it was scripted. And I did mention several times Dan Hardy. Now, I know a lot of you tweeted Dan Hardy, and I appreciate that very much. And I hope you told him as well that I said I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. And that's why his comments grabbed me and why I focus so much on them because of who I think he is as a martial artist and his background. But that being said, I do think it's important to talk and I do think it's important to hear someone's point of view. So I wanted to have him on the program now, as I said, a late edition to speak about this very subject. So here he is, Dan Hardy on the phone. Dan, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Okay. Are you good? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for joining us again. Um, okay. So this is a fascinating topic, Dan. I don't know if you heard the top of the show, but that's in a nutshell what I said. But I did say this also, Dan. I did say this. I said that I thought that it's it's a very serious accusation. If someone fixes a fight, if someone is caught scripting something, you know, a combat sports match, you can go to jail. It's happened before. Not only are you no longer able to promote you'll go to jail. It is an offense. It's a crime. And I said that unless I have facts, information, conversations, I, I don't feel comfortable going there. And I do think it's somewhat reckless to go there. And the tweet that got my attention was, the Bellator 170 main event was more choreographed than a Britney Spears music video. Shame, really. It might have been a fun fight. That's what you said. And what I said on the show, I just, I just want to put all the cards out. To be fair to you, I said on the show, it's not like you said it looked choreographed. You said it was choreographed, that it was a fact this was choreographed. That's a very serious thing to say about a fight, is it not? Uh, yeah, I suppose it is. I suppose it is. I mean, you, you've got to understand I was being factuous at the time. It was a, it was a, a rather flippant comment, but... Watching the whole build-up, and, and I'll give you exactly my perspective from, from an analyst point of view. Please, I saw I saw Chelsea and tell this 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 awesome story about how much it meant for him to beat Tito, you know, and the whole the whole family thing came up, and you know, it was a you had a, on on your podcast last week. I listened to it. it. It was a real impassioned speech about how important it was. But at the same time, he also spoke about you know how training camps get more difficult and. You know, is he too old? That's the question. The, the great quote that he said, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher it. It was something to do with, you may not be done with the sport, but the, the sport may be done with you. Mm -hmm. Great quote. Mm -hmm. So all of that going into the fight, I was expecting him to show up and just to show grit and determination and heart and give it everything he's got. And Tito came out looking in great shape. And I, I was expecting him to give it his best because Tito looked like he'd come for a fight. No doubt about it. Now, when I first watched it the first time around, I didn't see the controversy of the, the little tap. I don't know what that was. And I'm not suggesting that Tito had anything to do with this. Tito looked like he was celebrating like he just <laughs> won his UFC belt again. So I think Tito was, was all in. My question is whether Chael Sonnen went into that fight with with the intention of giving it everything he got because that was that was the story that he sold everybody and that was what i was so disappointed with now w when he got in there and and i mean he gave a, a, a very very basic single leg takedown which even me with awful takedown offense could have stopped and i know tito's the bigger man but chell's been watching him for his whole career they've been he'd been planning on fighting tito for his whole career so surely he would have prepped for that second of all I mean, just the progression that he, that he allowed Tito to get to, to mount, and then the lack of defense of the arm. And it, I mean, there was no hand fighting at all. And then the finish of the, of the choke was like, it wasn't even a face bar. It wasn't around his neck. It, it, you know, if, if you put your own head in that same position when you watch the fight, you can see that there's a, that there's a space it's on, the, on the right side of your face, between your right side of your face and your right shoulder. And anybody that has been in that, in that situation and has felt that position knows that it's uncomfortable, yes. But it's not a choke and it's not a tapping position. And to have arms spare and to not be doing anything with them just, just shows, it, well, it, it shows me one or two things. It shows me that he either showed up to, to the fight without the intention of actually giving any effort or that we've seen a guy that's been competing throughout his whole career on performance enhancing drugs. And this is the first time we're seeing him without so not only has he not got the artificial testosterone, but his body's now not producing 
the, uh, the, the natural testosterone as much. So his motivation bottomed out and he just, he got in there and realized that he no, no longer wants it. And, and that, they're the two conclusions that I come to. And I don't know which one's more disappointing because I was really excited to see him have a few more fights. I mean, you know, these talk about Vanderlei Silver out there and stuff, but if that's the version that we're going to see, I'm just not interested. I'd rather see Tito come back and have some more fights because he looked like he was in better shape and up for the fight. I'm so happy that we're able to talk about this because, of course, you could say a whole lot more in a conversation than in a tweet, 140 characters. But <laughs> being as well-spoken as you are, can I retort with this? Given that response, should you have probably tweeted, looks like Chael, doesn't look like himself, three years out of the game, off testosterone, off steroids, looks like Chael may have thrown the fight, had no interest in winning the fight, wasn't himself, was a shell of his former self, as opposed to the word choreographed, which then makes it seem like Tito and Chael are in on it, and who knows who else. There's a big difference between what you said and that tweet. Is that not fair? Oh, yeah, you're very right. And, and the first time I watched it, that was the first thing I saw, and I was so disappointed, and I was making a flipping comment, yeah. And, and may, maybe it was a little reckless in the position that I'm in, but I mean, that's, that's the whole point in Twitter is that you kind of throw random comments out there and, <laughs> and start a conversation. And that's exactly what this has done. Now, having watched it and gone over it and been thinking about it since it happened, I've, I've deconstructed it and taken it apart and I have a very different perspective of it now. And, it, and it's, it's nothing to do with Bellator or Tito. It's just Chael just showed up without any effort in him. And I've just, I'd never seen that before and I never expected it. And I was so disappointed, you know? I mean, to, to quote Nick Diaz, he sold his wolf tickets. I mean, like, we were all convinced that this was going to be a great fight. I mean, all the talk, he, he's such a good politician and this is why I like Jay. I mean, I find him a fascinating character. You know, as a case study for a psychologist, he would be fascinating. I would read that book. But the, the art of, of politics is what he brings to mixed martial arts. And he's, he's able to sell people a story that is believable, but not necessarily true. And, and I'm, I'm, when I first watched it and I saw his performance, my, it was a flippant comment, but I was disappointed because I bought into it. That's the truth. That's, oh, uh, I bought into it. I, I, I expected more of him. I thought he was going to show up like he wanted to fight and he should look like, like an old man. You know? I mean, my perspective, when, when Bellator brought him in, was that he wasn't necessarily there as a star athlete because he's 40 sure. and you know, I mean, and he's only just passing drug tests. I mean, he was making jokes about this on your podcast last week. Yep. So people say that I'm reckless for, for making a tweet like that. I think it's reckless for the main event of a Bellator fighter, uh, for, for the main event of a Bellator fight to have one half of the main event joking about this being the first time he's passed a drug test. That's unnecessarily true. in my opinion, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, th th there's a point where, where, you know, the lines are becoming blurred between pro wrestling because of this politics um, um, vibe that he, that he brings to the sport, you know? Like, it's just, like, are you going to show up and fight? Because you sound like you're going to, you talk the talk, but then he just, you know, he just rolls up and rolls over and, and, and chokes to a, to a half-squeezed face bar, you know? I mean, I, I want to cry for him. You still there? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, so I heard a click, so I didn't know if you if you um, if we lost you. So is is it fair to ask you this and to have you clarify this as much as possible? Because again, you know, I have the utmost respect for you and 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 what you've done in this sport and what you continue to do. Is it fair to say that you don't believe Bellator fixed this fight? That Tito was in on it? You feel like Chael's performance? And maybe it's like those those Us Weekly magazines. I don't know if you know them when they say stars. They're just like us fighters. They're just like fans. You can be emotional. You can tweet something while it's happening. But is it fair? Going back to what I was talking about, because I was only talking about your sort of, I guess, for lack of a better word, accusation that this was a fixed fight that can lead to you know, prison time. Is it fair to say that you don't believe that Bellator Tito were in on this, that this was maybe your disappointment in Chael coming through? No, no. You know, another thing, I, I, no, I don't think so. I don't think Bellator had any, anything in on this. And I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying the fight was, was, was any, contrived in any way. I mean, I, I'm just, that was my first reaction when I saw it because I okay. couldn't think of any other way that Chael would have rolled over like that. And, and, and then given my perspective of, of the fact that Bellator brought him in basically as a mouthpiece to draw in an audience, but I, don't, I just never got the impression that they were, they were expecting him to do anything athletically. I mean, he's 40 years old and 
but he, he's he's been retired for a time. So I just, from my perspective, it just seemed like he, he was there to kind of give Tito this big boost. You know what I mean? And it, and it just looked like he he didn't want to fight. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm not saying that Bellator were in on it, and I'm not saying that Tito was in on it. And to be honest, what I'm seeing now. After, after watching it a few more times, probably 20 or 40 times, <laughs> Tito kept that, that squeeze on a bit too long, and this was discussed um, at the press conference. Now, I know if I was in that situation, and this is the same if, if somebody taps to strike, and the, the only time you will have to drag me off for an, an opponent is if they are conscious and tap into strikes, because I think it's despicable. Find a way out of it, or... I don't know. Just don't tap to strikes. It's it's just you just I just unless you're actually physically injured, don't tap to strikes. And in a situation like that where you've got a half finished submission and you're squeezing and the guy's tapping, if I was Tito, I would be annoyed at Chael because he sold Tito this story that he was going to show up and give him a good fight. And Tito showed it ready. He looked like he was in as good shape as he did when he when he when he was fighting in, in the UFC in his prime, if not better. I thought he looked leaner. I thought he looked quicker. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, so I, I think I think there was a, an element of disappointment for Tito there that he was giving up so quickly because he squeezed that that on a bit a bit tighter when, when he was tapping. I'd have probably done the same thing if if I knew the guy was tapping and he wasn't really hurt. So few people know exactly what goes on in there. Have felt it. Have been there. You are obviously one of them. Can I ask you this? I haven't been in a professional fight, so I don't know truly what that feels like with the world watching, with the cameras, with the lights. But I did see the fight, and I will admit my first thought wasn't that it was fixed. I was like, ah, Chell just didn't look like himself. I mean, he looked obviously a little bit out of shape. He was rusty three years, etc. This was a big deal for Tito, wanted to go out on top. When, when, when I've seen, and I know you have as well, rear naked chokes that aren't quite sunken in, you know, arm under the chin, applied perfectly, but sometimes weird things happen, guys tap, maybe they're rocked from a previous punch or they're injured, and, or maybe it's just the pressure on the jaw. And I looked at Chael's face after going back and, and rewatching it, it seemed like it was turning purple. He was out of breath. Now, I don't know if that's him holding his breath, who knows, but it, it definitely looked like his face was changing colors. Is it is it possible that that was just maybe kind of like a, a I don't know, a, a, a neck crank, if you will, sort of a hybrid of a rear naked choke neck crank. And, you know, he's just kind of out of shape, not as good as he once was, not on the juice or whatever. And he just tapped out of, you know, lack of cardio. Is it is it crazy that he tapped to that? I mean, can you not see at all any sort of scenario where that would affect him, hurt him, leading to the tap? I guess it's not crazy, no. I guess it's not. You know, when I see a guy, it was it Cub Swanson that tapped in a rear naked choke when his jaw broke. I think it was Cub Swanson, right? If I remember remembering right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My memory's not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, when I see something like that, for, you know, from a guy that's giving everything he's got to a guy that's in a main event that looks like he's having his head squeezed, like, yeah, I mean, his head went purple. But if I grab my index finger and squeeze it with my other hand, the top of my finger is going to go purple. You know what I mean? It just looked like Tito was squeezing his head. It, you know what I mean? It, mm. it looked like one of the old Dan Seven... Dan Seven rear naked choke finishes, but not under the neck. And there was a point, in fact, if you go back just before he um, just before um, he tapped, there was actually a point where he moved himself into the choke a bit further and then turned his chin away. It was almost like he was he was like trying to find a way out. I, it's, it's, it's all speculation. It is what it is. But I tell you, I tell you what. One thing I do know: when you've had some experience of being in there and, and of feeling a fight. Whether you're involved in the fight or not, or this is at least for me anyway, I watch a fight and I can feel what's going on in those fighters' minds. I know what they're feeling. I know what their emotions are. And I know where their head's at. I can look a fighter in the eye and I can tell you when he's given up. And I can tell you when he's fired up and when he's ready to go. And in Chael Sonnen's eyes, from the start of that fight to the finish, he just wasn't there. Mm. He just didn't want it. I maintain, though, that that's different than choreographed or fixed, Correct. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ariel, if it'll make you happy, I'll delete the No, screen. no. It's in, it's in, <laughs> no, no, it's in, but it's, it's, look. You know, what, what, to follow up, a sure. tweet that I, I sent out a little, a little while after was that I understood Meryl Streep's comment about the acting being really poor. You know what I mean? Again, <laughs> sure. being flippant, you know what I mean? But it's, it, it seems apt because that seemed more like a performance than a fight from Chell to me, you know, which yeah. goes into the whole pro wrestling you know, being a, being a, a mouthpiece, a politician and playing the game, 
you know? I hope it's... And then, and then, we're, and, and then the other thing is, well, when, yeah. when you look at the purses that come out, and I see you got paid 50 Gs. That's not true, by the way. All kinds of that's alarm not, bells that, 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 That's not true, by the way. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. So, 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 so what was his purse then? Did he get paid? Because there was no pay-per-view. It was free on... on he got TV, paid right? way more than that. Way more than that. You know how this game goes. For some reason, they don't like to make these purses public, but I can assure you he got paid well. Well, he's not coming back to fighting for 50 Gs, less than his UFC <laughs> contract, right? I mean, you know that. But okay, so then... Well, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but but then you know, but then that 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 tells me when I when I see that as, as fifty G's is announced first, then I think, well, he seems more more invested in Bellator. Then maybe maybe that's maybe that's where his his investment is. Maybe it's not. Maybe he's not in it for the financial gain of being a fighter. Maybe he's in there to help grow Bellator, and that's where his that's where his purse lies. I mean, I thought he was going to become a frontman for Bellator, to be honest, because he's the perfect kind of person to sure, do it. Sure. Sure. You know, so that that was when I saw him involved. That was my instinct. I thought, oh, you know, Chell's going to become the new frontman, and and you know, he, he's got the mouth. He, he does the talk very well. You know, it's, it, it, he's a great promoter. He would make a fantastic fight promoter. Yeah. It, 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 he convinced me that he was going to show up and fight, and he didn't. You know, and I'm pretty good at spotting these people. <laughs> and 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 maybe that will happen. And uh, and you know, he's he's certainly he's done it for his own little promotion. I hope you believe though, Dan, that the reason I was sort of zeroing in on your tweet is because I have so much respect for you because I feel like someone in your position with your background and your current job as UFC analyst I mean these are things in this day and age like there I feel like there has to be some sort of accountability to an accusation like that so I'm happy that we were able to talk about it and, and sort of get your true feelings on it because I, I feel like that's a very serious thing and it, and it puts a black cloud over the sport if people are accusing promoters of fixing fights. Now, do you believe, Dan, as someone who understands the showmanship part of the game, do you believe that given their presentation, like I also said at the top of the show, that they need to start taking a serious look as to why this keeps coming up. People accuse the Kimbo Ken, uh, Ken Shamrock fight of being fixed, Kimbo, Dada, etc. And, and why is this happening? Do you feel like Bellator skirts the issue too much between like pro wrestling and showmanship at the ramp and the videos and all that stuff and the real actual sport. And that will lead then to accusations like that. Is this a problem in your opinion with Bellator? I, I, don't, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's not something I've ever really paid a great attention to. I mean, there was always talk of, of fights in pride yeah. being, you know, yeah. Yeah. It, being choreographed and on all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, I saw pride for what it is, and, and like I said, I can tell a real fight. I can see when two guys are in there to give it their all. And even even when you know, even when a guy's in there and, and he and he doesn't want to fight, but he but he knows it's for real, I can tell that as well. You know, so I, I can watch a performance. I never really got into pro wrestling. I did when I was a kid, but you know, it, it, but I, I I left it with the Legion of Doom and the Bushwhackers. So <laughs> I've never I never really got into that kind of stuff, and and I just. When I when I tune in to watch a fight, I just want to see I want to see guys give it everything. That I mean, as far as Kimbo goes, I I used to love watching his fights. He was he was a hell of a fighter, and I did a couple of signings with him for Tap Out, and I I loved the guy. I can't imagine him ever doing anything that was that was false. Okay. Uh, but I, I can't speak for anybody else. Okay. But you know, if, if this question if these questions keep coming up, then you know maybe it's something that needs to be tackled. I, I, I have to. Be, I have to be honest. When I watched the fight, the first thing I thought was, oh, "Hang on a minute, this this smells weird. This is dodgy." And and I, and yeah, I, I casually put a tweet out, and I probably shouldn't have done. And this is a, this is a good opportunity to to explain my case and to learn from it in the future. And I will I will withhold a little bit next time, or perhaps perhaps get out of bed and have a cup of tea before I tweet. <laughs> it is, it is <laughs> early you, in the morning. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. If this question keeps coming up, then it needs to be asked. I, I like questioning everything, and I think I think we, you know, it, it's healthy to question these things. So, yeah, for sure. I and mean, there was all kinds of videos that came up, and, and loads of people pointing things out about that fight. So it wasn't just it wasn't just me that thought it. There was a lot of people. I'll tell you what wasn't uh, fake or or scripted. That flying knee from your boy uh, Paul Daly. Holy wow, smokes! Right, amazing stuff. You know, Paul's always been such a talent. I've, I've, we used to train together. A lot of people don't know how close Paul and I were. I mean, we used to spar. I mean, I'm not, I'm not joking. Like 50 rounds, we would spar, and because we were both, we both had such good control, we never hurt each other. But every time he connected with his left hand, it was ridiculous. It just feels like it feels like being hit with a kettlebell. <laughs> it's like someone smacking you around the side of the head with a, with a bowling ball. It, there's just a weird kind of weight in it. Uh, the kind of weight that I see when John Lineker plants his feet and throws. You know what I mean? 
and I've been in I've been in Paul's corner a few times when he's he's been on the brink. He's been pushing it like when he fought Xavier Super Pockham in London mm. uh, at, at Cage Age. And I, I tell you what, he, he was. We were up all night. We were up all night. I, I won't explain what we were doing, but it was a bit of a wild night, and he should have been getting some sleep, and he and he didn't. And he was fighting a very dangerous fighter. And and the start of the fight was going terribly. He was getting kneed. He was getting pushed around. Out of nowhere, this this big left hook came out and laid Professor X out cold. And it's just it's such a strange, weird supernatural power. He's able to connect with it without even having his feet planted very well, and and he's able to transfer it as well. Obviously, as you can see into knees. I'd love to see him back in the UFC in the tight in the mix at the top. I really would. It's, it was disappointing what happened against Koscheck. Yep. Yep, it really was. Um, hey, last thing before we go, and this has been great. I really appreciate you coming on on very short notice. Um, a few weeks back, you were on the show, told us about your doctor's appointment in January. We're inching closer to February. So do you have an update on your health situation? Uh, I, I've done the testing. I'm waiting on results. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, funnily enough, I did the test today and I was uh, I was getting tweets coming into my phone as I was driving back. So I was I was wondering what was going on. Um, but yeah, I, I did the test there. I feel great. You know, I'm I'm in good shape. I'm, I, I did the stress test. No worries. And we'll just we'll just see what the results say. I'm I'm not sure what they're going to say, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with with, with the, the the knowledge either way. Okay. Uh, whatever comes back. Um, but uh, it's it's going to be an exciting couple of years. I've just I've just uh, agreed another three years with the UFC, so you'll be hearing my voice again and. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to what that's going to what that's going to do because we've got loads of good things planned. Uh, w- by the way, when you tweeted um, that you were going to come on, some fans thought that you were going to announce that you were going to be fighting in London. They are searching for a main event. Let's just say you get good news this week. Is that even possible, or is that too short of a time frame? No, no. I, I need to do a, I need to do at least half a training camp just to see where my weight falls. Um, right. I, I've been training consistently, but nothing like I would if I was in training camp and. Uh, I, I just, I'd like to kind of get my body moving again, start doing two a days again and, and just see where my weight falls and, and make a decision then. Okay. Um, I, I, I would definitely be at UFC London. I'm hoping to be on the mic. I'm not sure exactly uh, what role I'll be playing, but I'm hoping to be commentating, obviously. Um, and I'm hoping to get a, a great main event announced soon. We've got some good fights on the card already, so. Yes. It could, be, it could see uh, Jimmy Manoa back. Yep, absolutely. Um all right. Well, are, are you happy? Or do you feel like, cause I saw you, I saw you tweeted, Dan, you said you didn't think that I would call you here. I am calling you. So I proved <laughs> you wrong, right? You thought I was going to keep yeah. this going. And I hope, you know, once again, maybe I should have, it's hard to get everyone on the show that you're kind of talking about, but I hope you know that it was with the utmost respect that I zeroed in on your tweet because of how I feel about you and your background. So please, I, I, I just want to say that again. Of course, of course. You, you, you know, you know me, Ariel. We, we've 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 been chatting for a long time now. We've poked fun at each other. It's all fun. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for the insight. Great to hear from an actual professional fighter on this particular issue. Uh, great stuff, and and do keep us posted on those uh, those results. I know a lot of fans are wishing you the best. I will be, mate. Good talking to you. All right, there he is, the outlaw, Dan Hardy. How fun was that? Getting to clear the air and once again proving that uh, maybe not everything can be said in a matter of 140 characters. And uh, sometimes if it's in the middle of the night or early morning, then maybe sometimes things shouldn't be tweeted. Uh, I did, by the way, uh, want to actually find out from a commissioner, from someone who is involved in these sort of things, what could happen if a fight is found to be fixed? And this is from, uh, this is from Andy Foster of the California State Athletic Commission. He said, we would launch an investigation and if confirmed, certainly maximum administrative penalties would be recommended to the commission. And they may also recommend and request criminal prosecution to the local district attorney. And then he said, let me know if you want the associated code sections in the law. So like I said, very serious. Um, it's, it's, I mean, as far as fighting is concerned, promoting fights are concerned, doesn't get more serious than that. If you just Google, uh, I think it's combat sports, fixing fights, tons of articles will come up. And even recently there was a promoter out of Vegas, I think that was uh, sentenced to 37 months in prison for fixing fights. So this is a serious thing, no doubt about it. 
And then, it's, and then when you have actual fighters, analysts saying it, then it's a serious thing. But again, I maintain, I don't think that was the case. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the real answer is, it seems like Chael Sonnen was, you know, rusty, out of shape, probably not best suited to fight at 205. And then you couple all those things, everything that he's been through in his life over the past couple of years, personally and professionally, and then you couple that with this being Tito Ortiz's Super Bowl. Tito Ortiz was attacking this fight like he was fighting for the UFC belt again. This fight meant the world to Tito Ortiz. He wanted to go out on top. His kids were there. His 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 uh, girlfriend was there. His family was there. So this meant the world to him. This was his last chance at greatness. And then for Chael, it's him getting his feet wet again. Those two things are, are going to collide. And clearly, you know, Tito came with his A game and, and Chael didn't. I really think that's it. Nothing more to it.